illustrations by Pete. Hello everybody and thank you for clicking on another video. So this video is inspired because I was watching another YouTube channel and they were talking about color theory. Now these people are very well respected, amazing artists, and uh, I was a little surprised to hear them say the things they were saying. So they were talking about complementary colors and they were showing a color wheel. They were sitting there talking about things and they said, think about, it's just an ignorant statement, I think is what it is, but they, they're talking about complementary colors and how you should use them and, and they should be used a certain way. And they said, well, think about how animals find food in nature. They look for complementary colors like green and red. Think of a tomato or a strawberry or a bee to a rose. Of course it's easy to come with examples of exactly what you want to give an example of. But do you even know what colors animals see? Their eyes don't all work like ours, you know. And what about purple and green plants or yellow and green plants? Do, you, do the bees not know how to find them or what they are? But what about animals that eat bananas or kiwi or blueberries? Do they not understand how to find those? I think there's a lot of artists who go around and they they believe that every concept is this masterful revelation of knowledge. And they they try to I think they think they're Yoda in the world of art. And it causes someone who maybe doesn't know not to listen to this nonsense that it make it gives them some self-doubt, it makes them feel unsure of themselves. And I'm not putting down art education um, I think an artist can find out what looks nice to them without being told exactly what should be nice to them. So it's really a, a personal preference, right? Either you're trying to replicate what you see and, and trying to do a color match, in which case it would be very important to understand color because you're trying to do a color match, or you're trying to represent something the way that you want to represent it, the way that you like it, right? Now, there was this teacher who had two paintings. This is a separate video that I, I saw this very soon after seeing this other video. And they had two paintings side by side. And they said uh, to each, they know who painted what. But there was two people, that two students they had, and they painted a couple of things. And it was the, it was the identical same thing. But it was very close. It was very close, but the, the teacher said, okay, now uh, this is how you're supposed to paint with these quick intentional strokes, and this is how you're supposed to hold the brush, and they ended up painting, and they then the other person, the one person, and they were holding like the end of the paintbrush, and they were just making real quick strokes. The other person was holding the paintbrush real up close on end and was like almost like a pen and, and painting uh, very slowly. And the teacher said, I can tell you because I am trained uh, who painted which one. But I like the other one better. But they were still both very good. But I would have paid more money if I was buying these, these pieces of, of art. I would pay more money for the one that they said was done wrong. Because art, if, if there's one thing it is, it's subjective. Yes, you can say that someone painted a replica of something very well, and that may be objective. They may have painted a bird exactly the way the bird looks in the picture, and they put that on the paper. That's an objective statement. But subjective is, do I like it? Is that something that, is that style that it was painted in something that I like? That's subjective. Look, the point of this story is don't let anyone tell you that the colors you choose are wrong, or the way you hold the brush is wrong. Not that it's bad to try different ways of doing things, but, uh, you know, try to find what works best for you. Do what you want to do and um, how you want to do it, unless you want to do it exactly like someone else. Now, if you want to do it exactly like someone else, and, and you can learn from them, you can ask them, how do you paint? How do you use color? How do you use shadow and, and shape and things like that? That, there's nothing wrong with that. You, you can do that. If you don't want to do things the way someone else does them, 
do them the way that you do. I mean, what would it be like if uh, someone like da Vinci was teaching Monet? And, and I know they weren't alive at the same time. It's besides the point. But if Monet went and, and sat down in da Vinci's class, da Vinci would tell him that he's doing all sorts of things wrong. He's using shadow wrong, he's using shapes wrong, he's using uh, the texture of his brush strokes are wrong. But if everybody painted the same way, we would have very boring art. Everything would be exactly the same. And I think you should just, you need to focus on what you enjoy doing. And uh, you do what you want to do. And let other people do what they want to do. Don't fall for the Yoda impersonators. Okay, you know, people sometimes just like to sound like they're smart. So they say things that they think smart people say, like um, you can't see the forest for the trees, which means that you can't see the big picture because you're too focused on the details. Well, why can't that makes it sound like focusing on details is wrong, but it's not right. I mean, you, you have to focus on the details to end up with the big picture. The details have to be correct. If you, if you build a house and you don't pay attention to the details, the house is gonna fall down, right? You need to do that. So if someone tries to say some stupid thing that they heard somewhere, that whatever, just let them know. Say, you know, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that gullible. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna do what I do. You do what you do. It, that's like, you think successful people do, and you hear all these people say, oh, what? Th I did this schedule, I did this person's schedule for this amount of time, and this is what happened, and everybody watches this, and, and oh, wow, yeah, they did great work. No, do you know what that successful person who originally did that did? They didn't do what everybody else does. That's the point. The point is, that they did something completely different and they were successful based on their strengths, not based on everybody else's strengths. I don't want to do anybody else's uh, routine or their, keep their schedule or do anything. I want to do mine because I'm going to be successful at mine. And I, I probably won't be as successful at someone else's because they focus on their skills. I need to focus on my skills. So that's what you have to tell these people. Let me do me. And you keep doing you. It's okay. Don't worry. Uh, I'm not saying that you're giving bad advice. I'm just saying that your advice is going to work for you. Now, sometimes there's general advice that's good. I'm not saying that there's not. And I'm not saying that you should not experiment with other people's stuff. If, if someone does something really well and you want to do that thing really well, there's nothing wrong with experimenting. But make sure it's tailored to you. Make sure it's, it's honed in on what you're good at. And where I think this kind of attitude comes from is that people think they have to be someone to everyone else. So how about it? remove the anxiety from your mind? If you think about who are you to other people, I'm not always going to be something to everyone. Well, I'm going to be something to everyone because even being no one to them is being something. It's just that something isn't someone. So forget everything else I just said in between there. But you don't need to be someone for everyone, is what I want to say. You don't need to be, and I, I don't know if that has to do with um, people that don't understand their place in other people's lives. Or, I, I don't know. And, and I fall into that, too. I'm guilty of that. I'm sure I am. But I don't think you need to have a word of words of wisdom for every person you come in contact with. I don't think they need to do things your way all the time. And I'm... Like I said, I'm guilty of that. I'm giving you advice right now. So that proves that I'm, I'm guilty of that and, uh, and, and a little hypocritical. And uh, you can call me out on that. That's okay. That's fine. I just, I'm passionate about, I, I really don't like when people cause self-doubt in other people. It just may be how they function or how they do things. And they decide, no, this is how everybody is going to react. But, Especially when it comes to art. You're, you're painting. You're doing something to express yourself. You're trying to communicate something from yourself. And I'm going to go back to that example. If everyone did it exactly the same, it would be very boring. 
just do what you want to do. I feel like I'm just rambling now. I'm talking in circles. I apologize. So have you ever started a collection on accident? This happens to me a lot. Well, I don't want to say a lot. More than it probably ever would normally. I don't know. I think it happens a lot to me. But um, I, I started this Funko Pop collection, but I didn't start it. Uh, first, I had uh, one of my brothers gave me a small one. It was a mini pop figure. And then another brother gave me another pop figure. And then gave me another pop figure another year. And um, I, I think I might have only bought one. But I just started this collection. And I, I have four. But, oh no, I have, I have two other ones that we put away. And that was just because I thought... Maybe someday they'll be worth something, but probably not because what they do is they tell you something is a limited edition, exclusive, whatever, and then they end up just flooding the market with so many of them that they're never worth any money anyway. And you can probably pick one up for half the price that you actually paid for it originally, and that's fine. But I didn't start this collection myself, but now that I have it, I, I'm, I think I'm getting into it. I, once in a while, I'll look for them. And I'll say, oh, you know, I really want this one. Let me see if this one's available. And um, there, I have a theme. And I'm not ready to share that yet. Maybe one day I will. But right now I'm sharing so much, I have to keep some things a mystery. Some things have to remain a mystery. So one day I will share what my collection is. I'll show you everything. But anyway, let's, uh, let's move back to the painting. I wanted to paint this Yoda. And um, this part right here, I, I really messed up. But I mean, it's okay. I like it a little bit, how it came out. But I don't really think I did this the right way. And um, I would probably like to do it a different way. I, I like the initial, how it started to look. And um, I, I probably should have done things just a little bit different. But, uh, but it still looks okay. I enjoyed it. I like it. So this is the Daniel Smith Indigo color and one of the things I love about the paint is how well it spreads it just it likes to just spread sometimes you put color down it just stays put and stays where it is but the indigo likes to spread wherever the water is it just kind of finds the edges and um, that's something I like about the color so I used it here I, I might add some stars in the background or something when I'm done with it uh, just to make it look like a space scene um, but, but I don't know. Overall, I like it. I thought it came out pretty good. So if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. I'm going to try and release these every Monday. And, uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. And whatever time of day it is for you, I hope you have a good rest of the day. And if it's the end of your day, then I hope you have a good tomorrow. Because, well, I hope everybody has a good tomorrow. But I don't want you to get ripped off. Because you only have maybe an hour left of your day. And I just told you to have a good day. And everybody else might have watched it in the morning. And I'm telling them to have a good day. And they have a whole day ahead of them. So I want everybody to have a good today and tomorrow. Okay? All right. Bye.